Number 12. Show that the complete chemical equation, the, the total ionic equation, and the net ionic equation for the reaction represented by the equation, Ki aqueous plus I2 aqueous will yield Ki3 aqueous, gives the same expression for the reaction quotient. And then they have Ki3 is composed of the ions K plus and I3 minus. Okie dokie. All right, so something new here. We have the reaction quotient. The reaction quotient is a Q value. Now, it could be QC, depending on if we're taking concentrations, C for concentration, or QP, depending on if we're taking pressures. Since these are all in aqueous media, chances are they're going to be uh, concentration values and not pressure values. Usually when you see gases, that's the P, QP, and then C, uh, would be for aqueous. Okay. So first thing is, let's figure out, you know, what the complete chemical equation is. And that's the one that's given right here. So maybe I'll say, you know, the complete equation would just be what is written. So Ki aqueous plus I2 aqueous will be at equilibrium with Ki3. Remember the complete chemical equation, there is no breaking down. Now I just have to write the reaction quotient for that. Well, the reaction quotient mimics the K equation, which we've seen a couple of times, and that's this one. So maybe I'll just put this a little bit lower. Actually, I guess I'll put it at the bottom here. Now, just like a K value, a Q value is products divided by reactants, products over reactants. And we always have to take those values and raise them to the coefficients. So for this one, I'm going to say that the QC would equal something over something else. And maybe, maybe I'm just going to get rid of this because now we know that it is a Q value. And products is this reactants is this. Now the first thing that I do is I just like to run through the states just to see if there are any states that are not allowed to be in this equation. There are two states that are not allowed and there are two states that are allowed. The only states that are allowed for QC or any K value are aqueous and gases. No solids and no liquids allowed. But since we all have aqueous, right, they're all going to be check marks. We're allowed to use all three of these. So let's do it. Products divided by reactants. The quotient would be brackets, which means concentration. And then I put the product, which is Ki3. That's aqueous, so that's allowed. And then I would raise it to the coefficient, right? But I see that there's just one here, right? And maybe I'll do it in a different color just to show you. And for all of them, it's one. So I don't really need to raise anything to the coefficients in this case because everything is raised to the first. Now, let's do the bottom. There's two different reactants, so I just got to do both of them. I'll do Ki first. Okay, and then comes the I2. And now the reaction quotient is done for here. All right, moving on to the total ionic equation. So maybe I'll just put total ionic. Now remember, we've done net ionic equations before. I think this was in chapter four of the chem uh, second edition, not the atoms first, but the, um, the uh, just the second edition. Chapter four, if you guys wanna go back to that playlist, and check out how to do a total ionic equation, but this one will be kind of a re review, right? Remember, the aqueous guys should get broken up. This is a salt, potassium and iodine, so this will get broken down into its two components. However, this is the tricky one. I2 is a diatomic. Diatomics do not get broken down, even though it is say it's stated as aqueous, so that's the exception. And then this is aqueous. This is a another salt. This will break down into its two components, and they told us what it was here. So 
For the um, total ionic, you have two different ions here. You have K. And since K is in group one on the periodic table, it's a plus one. And that's aqueous. And then I have the iodine. That's a minus one. Aqueous. I'm going to leave the I2, but that's still aqueous. And this will be able to come to equilibrium with these two, which is now the K plus and the I3 negative, right? So I have K plus. This is also aqueous. And then plus the I3 negative. And that's aqueous as well. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is I will just... Whoop, I don't think I can move that, but maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll just put like a little line here. And now I'm going to write the QC for this one. Okay. Actually, I think, I think you guys can see the difference, right? So now I'm going to have two different products and three different reactants because they're all aqueous, right? So they're all checks. Right? Aqueous. Allowed. Allowed. Allowed in the queue. And then this one is allowed as well, and so is this one, right? So products over reactants. I have the K plus. I don't have to write aqueous. Now times by I3. Close that up. Perfect. And now comes the three on the bottom. So I have the K plus, close that up, times the I3, actually no, the I minus, and then the I2, right? They're all being multiplied each other by each other. I'll put this in blue because it's still a reactant. And they're still all have a one in front of... Uh, the, the the ion, right? So there's one of these, there's one of these, there's one of these, one and one. So I don't have to worry about putting any coefficients in here. So we're done with that. And then now coming down to the net ionic. Remember, the net ionic is anything that you can cancel out in your spectator ions. So for example, the K plus is going to cancel, but everything else is going to stay the same. So if I, if I just kind of like, remember, it will stay in the total, okay? But just to show you, I get rid of this, and I get rid of this, and now I just write everything else that's the same. So I got I minus 1, aqueous. I guess I'll just keep this in black just to show you guys that I didn't break it down. And then this will come to equilibrium uh, as I 3 minus aqueous. And now I just have to write the Q value for this. So I'll write this one at the third one on the bottom. Products over reactants, right? So now I just have one product. So I have I3 minus divided by the I minus one times by the I2. And if you can see here, it's literally the, so hold on, let me just finish this. Sometimes I can talk while I'm writing, but sometimes I can't. But if you see that the total ionic and the net ionic, you see how we just canceled out the Ks and we literally wrote the same thing, right? So that's how these two are the same because, whoop, because if I just cancel out the Ks, Mathematically, they are equivalent. But now let's just see how this one fits into the mix. Well, remember, a salt, the same concentration gets broken down by the ratio. So if I just have Ki3, and that breaks down into 1K and 1I3, it's a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So essentially, this number would be the same as this number. And do you see how now it's the same thing with the Ki, right? It's a one to one 
to 1 ratio. So the numbers would be exactly equivalent. So that's why they're all equivalent. And that's what we had to, to show, right? It said show that the complete chemical equation, the total ionic and the net ionic, uh, give the same expression. So they all give the same expression. And maybe I'll just fix this up a little bit just so that you guys don't get confused. But they give all the same expression because the salts would yield the same numbers as the other ones, right? Even if you break it down. So they're all the same. Yeah? Okay. So hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. I look forward to helping you guys out in more lessons. All right. And I'll see you later. Okay. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.